What's going on guys, Twiggin Timber Outdoors here and I want to talk to you guys a little bit about how I choose what rod I'm going to use in certain situations. So I'm going to break it down into a couple different ways. So first things first, I'm going to break it, break it down into dry fly, streamer, and we'll do nymphing. Okay? So, you know, just like any fly angler, most of us really like to throw dries. It's kind of the quintessential way to catch fish. Now, some of us have broken off into being specifically one thing or another, but I like to throw whatever's catching fish. And if it happens to be a dry fly, then buy, you know, more power to me. So if I'm going to be dry fly fishing, there are a couple things I want in a rod. First things first, if, I, if I'm going to be throwing dry flies, I want a rod that is going to be delivering my fly typically uh, a little more delicately. And so one thing that I like out of a rod, if I'm going to be fly, dry fly fishing, is a rod that's fairly forgiving. Um, I want it to be accurate, but I want it to be forgiving, meaning that I want it to uh, not really whip that fly out there uh, too fast. And so when I'm typically dry fly fishing, I want either myself a full flex okay rod, um, if, I'm if I'm fishing graphite. And so, for example, right now I'm fishing um, a full flex uh, three or four weight, depending on the situation. Uh, usually small stream stuff for me, a three weight or four weight does just fine. Um, if it's graphite, and this happens to be the riffle, and I've showed you guys that rod before. Another variation that I like to show people a lot is fishing different materials. If I'm not fishing graphite, I'm fishing bamboo or fiberglass. I mean, those are the three main rod materials that we are seeing in the current market today, whether you know you talk about different types of glass and stuff. So if I'm going to fish dry flies, I'll actually go a lot of the time to uh, bamboo rods. Why? Because it's that slow action. Okay, They're typically f mid or full flex rods, and but you get that really nice slow action out of out of cane or out of fiberglass. And what that allows me to do is it allows me, kind of has me slow down and not overpower my shots. Because if you, sometimes whenever you're fishing uh, graphite, you really, you get antsy. I mean, you're fishing dry flies to a fish that's rising. That doesn't happen all the time. And so you're sitting there and you, and you really want to present the fly delicately and you want your, your loop to unfold and you want it to be uh, accurate at the same time. And so when I'm fishing cane, that forces me as somebody who likes to move about and fish, you know, all the time, to so slow down. And so uh, this is a Headwaters um, four weight. Uh, it's an eight foot, or sorry, it's a seven and a half foot four weight. Or is it an eight foot four weight? Uh, I think it's a seven and a half foot uh, deluxe. And if I don't break it here, I'm going to put it back in its in its sleeve here or its sock. But that it's not the only material that makes you slow down either. I mean, whenever you're talking about uh, modern materials. Uh, you know, cane being uh, an older material still really holds up in my opinion. But with the introduction of cane, uh, or sorry, with, with the introduction of fiberglass rather, you start seeing similar, uh, similar, similar flexes, similar tapers in fiberglass. Uh, one thing that fiberglass does for you the same way that, um, that, uh, bamboo does for you is it forces you to slow down okay this is a little heavy for dry flies but this is um, a max glass max catch ultra glass uh, it's on a blue halo blank and um, fiberglass because it is a slower material same thing makes you really slow down and and time your casts and what that does in my opinion is it delicately allows you to present the fly you're not overpowering and punching uh, you know the rod to make it deliver, okay? You let the rod do the work, both in the glass and in the, or gla in the glass and in the cane. And so, <clears throat> I do this a lot. If, I, if I'm fishing spooky bass, okay? We'll consider poppers to be like dry flies, or deer here to be like dry flies too. Um, I'll use this six weight glass rod, it's an eight and a half foot six weight ultra glass, my, my max catch, um, to deliver deer hair, mice, and poppers, as well as um, foam or plastic hoppers, uh, big hoppers, or poppers to uh, picky bass because on longer leaders and this does a good job of that. <clears throat> now if I'm fishing streamers, typically my streamers are going to be a lot bigger and so if I'm going to fish big streamers I have to utilize different tech in that rod. Typically if I'm punching out streamers 
or bass fishing, I like to have a rod that's a little stouter, okay, and so a little faster action. What I mean by that is that the rod itself um, is more tip flex. So when we're talking about the, all these rods, <clears throat> if the rod is flexing uh, more so in the body of the rod, it's more of a full or mid flex rod. And the way we get that is if it's down here, it's full, then mid tip flex and what you get differences when it you know when I'm fishing a streamer and I really want to get a lot of uh, whip and, and, and line speed out of my my rod typically a faster or a tip flex rod will have more line speed and when you're talking about getting big bugs through the air a lot of the time open loops with line speed will do the trick especially when casting in wind and so I'll fish with a, a, a faster rod this one happens to be just a cheapo it's a songy long it's I think it's brand new, but uh, I fished it once. Um, it does the job at, at, at a five weight of casting streamers. Uh, and again, um, this one's a nine foot. Most of the rods I'll fish with either, you know, nine or ten foot, depending on the application. If I'm casting dries, I can get away with a little shorter of a rod. <clears throat> but again, if you're trying to... Rod length is a little tough to decipher whenever you're fishing uh, and you don't know what the situation's going to be. I personally, when fishing small streams, a lot of guys will fish really small rods. Like, for example, this this three weight that I have right here, I believe is a, uh, it's a nice mid-flex rod by Cabela's. And it's their, uh, what's it, their Three Forks Outfitters? Yeah. Um, it's a seven foot six three weight that's more of a, a mid or full flex rod. And uh, it's being short, in my opinion, six, seven foot six is short. Uh, being short, it's good for a couple of applications. What it doesn't do well is nymph, and what it also doesn't do well is get, uh, get line off of the water. So if you're fishing tricky technical waters and you plan on doing a blend of dry fly and nymphing, Sometimes a shorter rod is actually detrimental. And so even on rivers, or streams rather, that are very small, very skinny, very small, I will fish a longer nine foot rod uh, that I'm able to both, maybe eight, six to nine foot, because I can get that rod up and over if I need to nymph, or if I'm dry fly fishing, I get my dry fly out there with enough slack in the line, I can still lift, you know, if you're fishing from a distance on spooky fish, lift the rod up to make sure that you're you're allowing the best possible situation for for your drift to full fish. Now, when it comes to nymphing, you know, uh, nymphing is a little different than what I would pick typically for dry fly and uh, and streamer fishing. Now, if I'm going to fish a streamer, um, usually the rod length doesn't matter because I'm fishing an intermediate or a sink tip line, and I'm uh, stripping or I'm working that rod, but I still want a, a, a powerful butt section in that rod so that I can um, make you know quick hard mends if I need to without having to lift too much up and move, impart too much action on the unneeded action on that fly. Um, but if I'm nymphing, uh, I definitely want to go with something that's going to be uh, s snappy, you know, with, with a good a quick set, but at the same time I want to make sure that that rod is going to be forgiving when it comes to your um, your, your fighting fish and, and your hook set. So um, what I've really found is a 10 to, to 11 and a half foot. So this happens to be my Element 2 by Wetfly, um, and it's a it's a 10 foot uh, three weight. Um, for my small streams, has been awesome. It's a really snappy rod, but it is a mid flex rod um, that uh, I have no problem landing decent fish on. Um, but it also protects my tippet. That's another thing when you want to consider, uh, you know, the action of the rod. If you're fishing a, a full flex rod, one thing you're going to get in addition to softness and forgiveness uh, is you're going to get tippet protection, okay? If you're fishing bamboo, if you're fishing um, fiberglass, if you're fishing a full flex graphite rod, when you set the hook, um, you will have to set the hook a little further or a little harder, but... Um, because you have more forgiveness in the rod, you can fight fish deeper into the rod, you're going to protect the tippet a little bit better. That doesn't mean you can't go crazy and horse fish in. No. But uh, you do sacrifice some things with that. You sacrifice typically in non in rods that are on an upper level. You're going to see sometimes um, the rods be a little less accurate. 
uh, you're going to see typically also some guys like to have a really clean finish snappy clean finish when they go to finish their cast and you're not going to see that with a full flex rod all the time um, you're not going to get uh, snappy hook sets typically okay you're going to have um, a little more you have to apply so like, for example when I'm steelhead fishing and I was nymphing with glass the other day um, hooked into a, into a fish and out of the three fish that I hooked into I could only really feel one of them I got a good set on because I had to really, in that last one, set the hook a lot harder on the glass because I never fish steelhead with this rod, um, and so it didn't work out as well until I realized, oh, I really have to lay the, the wood to them, if you will. Um, but don't let that deter you because uh, these rods, especially if you're visually seeing the fish take or you see an indicator drop or whatever, um, you're really able to, if you, if you put the mindset in there, to get a really good high and hard trout set in, um, it's really fun on, a, like, for example, a, a bamboo four weight to really set the hook hard because it really sets, one, it gets the fish a little riled up until they jump and stuff, but at the same time, um, you're not going to break that tippet as easily on these really light uh, rods. Like, for example, this graphite rod is being super soft. I'm able to really get fun fights out of, out of decent fish, small fish, but also I can really set the hook and 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 get a good gauge on what I'm able to do while still being forgiven. Um, that being said, though, too, when casting big gnarly frot flies or you're casting streamers or nymph rigs, it's not that nice, and you're more than will or you're more than likely to have a harder time casting big flies. Um, that's not to say that you can't, but most rods that are progressively getting more performance based are leaning more so towards tip action or for fast action rods and that's because there's more efficiency in the design typically um, efficiency meaning that for the average or new caster um, that has already felt a rod load and knows how the basic mechanics you can get typically farther distance out of a, a tip flex rod than you can a full flex or mid flex rod um, but that also means that if you're fishing smaller streams, you're going to need more weight out, out of the tip end of the rod from the line to get a good uh, bend in your rod to feel the rod load. So what, that's why we typically say a full or mid-flex rod with a, a, a half or full line heavier line on that rod for brand new anglers to feel the rod load. Well, um, that will affect your performance a little bit, but it will allow you also, when fishing smaller streams, uh, to fish... Um, to, to have less line out of the rod when you go to cast it and that will allow you to deliver flies uh, or cast um, a little easier at closer range so for example on most of my very small waters 15 foot 16 foot uh, to 20 foot or smaller um, I will one line or sometimes uh, if it's a if it's a 0.5 heavier line I'll go even still one and a half lines heavier on that rod um, because I know I'm not going to be casting farther than 15 foot. In fact, a lot of the time I'm not even casting that far. Uh, or Because what, there's always a sweet spot rod. And that's another thing you have to consider is each rod, even if it's the exact same style taper, the exact same style um, action on it, you're still going to have to cast that rod and get to know that rod. So for an example, if I have, and this is especially true for, for wood, like cane or fiberglass. Say this rod was a seven foot six, three weight, and that other seven foot six, three weight I have, uh, I wanted to put them test, to test, you know, against each other. They could be the same manufacturer, and they'd still have a different distance, a sweet spot. Um, and sometimes, for example, even I've noticed that similar rods will feel, I will feel it better, side like more of a sidearm cast versus more of an overhand direct over the top cast. So you have to practice with each rod. It's fun to have a do you know, dozens of rods or even three rods, but to know how they each perform in different situations and circumstances is crucial. Price point, we've already covered a video in price point, but I just wanted to talk about how the different actions in these rods affect why I use them. Ideally, for a dry fly rod, anywhere from seven six to eight foot um, full flex rod or cane or fiberglass uh, that will allow me to really feel the rod load at a close distance 
Um, and that way I can be a little more forgiven uh, and I can set the hook really hard if I need to. Nymphing, I will go with a 10 to 11 foot, maybe 11 and a half foot, three weight, uh, on smaller stuff, two weights, but th th those are extremely rare, uh, or four weight. But typically the three weight's a sweet spot for me because it kind of fishes like a four weight. And um, extremely light, I'll try. And then for a streamer rod, I'll go with a five, if it's a very fast action rod, a five weight, uh, nine foot, or a six weight, uh, nine foot, personally, because um, I, I don't fish that far, even with streamers, um, and I will, it'll probably be definitely a tip, act, a, a tip flex rod. Uh, the nymphing rods, there are specific nymph rods by lots of manufacturers, this one I fall in love with. <clears throat> so that's kind of what I would go for, um, and then I would sprinkle in fiberglass and bamboo anywhere I could in between there just to have some fun. If you guys like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I know it's a long one, but uh, I'm going to try and cover, you know, personal preferences along with some of the science behind what makes rods and, and lines different, um, and hopefully that's interesting to you. So if it was, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share it with others, please, especially new anglers that you you want to help educate. Um, uh, so make sure you guys follow the, uh, the playlist below, and until next time, guys, catch you guys in the flip side, tight lines, and we're out.